Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told out of Voice of Radio, so today I'm here to tell you that Whimsicott V-Star makes no sense. Now, let me be clear. I am not saying anything bad about Whimsicott as a Pokemon. I am not saying I dislike Whimsicott as a Pokemon. I am not saying Whimsicott is not a cool Pokemon. I am merely saying that Whimsicott getting a V-Star made no sense and does not fit with all of the other V-Stars we've seen. It is a clear outlier, which frankly confuses me. And I put this opinion out very briefly over on Twitter there the other day, which generated way more discussion than my tweets generally do. So I thought it was time for a proper explanation. I would say I'm not saying anything bad about the card, but actually I've gone on record on this channel. I've ranked all the V-Stars and I told you that Whimsicott is the worst. I actually really dislike the card, but it's not because it's Whimsicott. It's because I think it is the worst V-Star we've had so far. So Whimsicott then, why doesn't it make any sense? Well, if we stick in Brilliant Stars for the moment, we saw, other than Whimsicott, we saw Arceus, Shaman, and Charizard. And all of those make perfect sense. Now, if we look at what the Pokemon TCG is doing at the moment, we are very much in Gen 4 territory. We have started, you know, really with Brilliant Stars focusing in on the remakes of Diamond and Pearl. That being, of course, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. And then, of course, we are starting to now bring in a bunch of stuff from the Hisui region from Legends Arceus. We are fully in kind of Gen 4 territory here. And if we look at all of the other V-Stars, they make sense. So if we look at Arceus and Shaman, they are full-on Gen 4 Pokemon. Arceus, I mean, firstly, you've got the cover Pokemon. I mean, it's literally name is in the title. Pokemon Legends Arceus, big Gen 4 Pokemon. And then we've got Shaman, who is a big Gen 4 Pokemon. And let's not forget that we've also got that Shaman thing going on in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl at the moment, where you can go and get yourself a Shaman. So my point is, these are proper Gen 4 Pokemon that make a huge amount of sense. And that is lovely. Now, Charizard is not a Gen 4 Pokemon, but at the risk of sounding reductive, Charizard is Charizard. Charizard gets the chase cards, and I mean Charizard gets the chase cards, because we can have a look through from kind of Gen 3. There is only one Pokemon who's got an EX, literally little X, and a level X, and an EX, big E, big X, and a Mega EX, and actually more than one of each of those, and a GX, and a Tag Team GX, and a Pokemon V, and a Pokemon V Max. There is only one Pokemon that has got all of those other than Charizard. Anyone want to name it before I tell you? It's Gardevoir. Gardevoir actually did have all of those. Charizard did, and Gardevoir did. They're the only ones. Of course, the thing with Charizard is that it was out a little bit earlier, so we can go a little bit further, and we can bring in Pokemon Star, and we can bring in Shining Pokemon, and then actually Charizard then goes and wins. My point is, when it comes to chase cards, we get Charizard. And, you know, there's silly things like Charizard got two tag team cards, which, incidentally, not the only one that did, but still, that's kind of a big deal. So when Charizard gets a V-Star, that all makes perfect sense. Yes, it's not a Gen 4 Pokemon, it's, it's not even in Legends Arceus as it stands at the moment, so there are reasons to go, well, that doesn't really fit. Charizard is different. Charizard gets pushed ahead of the others, and we can be sad about that, and that's just the way it is. But Charizard gets pushed above the others. Charizard genuinely is special. So, in Brilliant Stars, Whimsicott seems to stand out. But then again, we can look at that and go, well, hang on a second, we'll see. That's not really terribly fair, because you're only looking at Brilliant Stars. You're only looking at the first four V-Star. There are a whole bunch of other V-Star surely Whimsicott still doesn't look weird when we include all of those. Well, yeah, it does. Because as well as Brilliant Stars, we also got ourselves a couple of promo boxes featuring Leafeon and Glaceon coming in as V-Star for the very first time. And would you believe it, they are, of course, the Gen 4 Evolutions, And Evolutions are always very prominent Pokemon. So it's not just 
that we've got these Gen 4 Pokemon in Leafeon and Glaceon, but these are, like Shaman and Arceus, especially prominent Gen 4 Pokemon. So we're still fully in Gen 4. Over in Japan, they got a couple of other little V-Star decks featuring new V-Stars, and they come along with Darkrai and Lucario. And of course, Lucario is very much one of the most prominent, popular Gen 4 Pokemon, and Darkrai is that super popular mythical Gen 4 Pokemon. So again, we end up with really, really popular, really prominent Gen 4 Pokemon. Lucario, of course, is coming in its own premium collection. And although we don't actually, I suppose, know this for a fact, we have seen that Astral Radiance, the Elite Trainer Box, is featuring Darkrai on it, on both the regular and the Pokemon Center exclusive. So that basically confirms that Darkrai is in the set. So we're still going full Gen 4, Charizard because it's Charizard, and then Whimsicott's just sitting out there. But then we get to Battle Region over in Japan, and this is really the point where Pokemon started going, right, Legends Arceus is out now, Legends Arceus is a thing, let's go full Legends Arceus. Because in Battle Region, we saw 3 V-Star, and they were the... Stage 2 versions of your first partner Pokemon. Your Hisuian Decidueye, your Hisuian Samurott, and your Hisuian Typhlosion. So we're not necessarily talking, you know, classic Gen 4 Pokemon here, but we have now moved into Legends Arceus. We've got these Hisuian Pokemon coming in, and they are, you know, they are your free V stars that we see in Battle Region. And that makes perfect sense because people love the fully evolved first partner Pokemon. They're always amongst the most popular, the most prominent Pokemon in a particular game. So when we're starting to push Legends Arceus, it makes sense that we would get them as your V stars. And then we move into Sword and Shield 10. Now that is, of course, a double set, Space Juggler and Time Gazer, which are going to be brought into Astral Radiance over here. And what we see is the first two V-Stars that are announced, that are revealed, are the origin forms of Dialga and Palkia, which incidentally makes perfect sense. You really could have seen that one coming. They were always going to be the cover Pokemon of the sets. So they were always going to get V-Stars. As a little side note here, in Sword and Shield 10, we only got one gold V-Star. That was Arceus. In Sword and Shield 9A Battle Region, we only got one gold V-Star. That was Samurott. But here, because it's a double set, I would expect one gold V-Star in each of the sets. One in Space Juggler, one in Time Gazer. And I'm going to go massively out on a limb here and suggest that actually that they're going to be Diagra and Palkia. It's not terribly relevant to what we're talking about now, but it's just a prediction I want to get out there. I think we're going to see two gold Pokemon in that particular set, and they are going to be Diagra and Palkia. So here we've got prominent Gen 4 Pokemon. They are the box legendaries, but then at the same time, they are also very prominent Pokemon in Legends Arceus. So once again... We're exactly where we expect. We've got more V-Stars, which are linking in perfectly to what we would expect. And then we finish off the most recent one that was actually just revealed, well, a couple of days ago as I record this, Cleaver V-Star. It's coming in its own collection box. We've not actually seen this over in Japan, although I suppose by the time you listen to this, you might have. I'll try and add a correction or pin a comment if that's the case. But it's almost certainly coming in Sword and Shield 10, because otherwise we probably, if it was coming in a, its own deck or box, we probably would have heard about it by now. And Cleaver, of course, is the new evolution of Cyber in Legends Arceus. One of the new Pokemon from Legends Arceus. So, yeah. What we basically end up with is a whole bunch of Pokemon that makes sense. And then Whimsicott. Because we've got a whole bunch of Pokemon that are prominent in Gen 4. You've got your Arceus and Shaman from the Brilliant Star set. Then you've got your Leafeon and Glaceon that came along as promos. Then you've got your Lucario and Darkrai, who are promo slash set Pokemon depending on where you look. We then move into Legends Arceus, and we got the three first partner Pokemon from that game. Then we've got Dialga and Palkia. And then we've got Cleaver, one of the new Pokemon from the game. And the new Pokemon are always pushed forward when the TCG starts looking at that game. One of the outliers is Charizard, but like I've explained, Charizard always gets the chase cards. Charizard is a special case, and I know some people don't like this. 
and that's absolutely fine. What I'm telling you is, I'm, I'm not saying Jarazard should always get the chase cards, or that Jarazard deserves to always get the chase cards, or that Jarazard shouldn't be put back and we should not push some other Pokemon in front. I'm not saying any of that. I am just telling you that if you look back through the Pokemon TCG, Charizard has always been a Pokemon that's been pushed to the front. So seeing a Charizard V-Star earlier than we would expect actually does make sense in the context of the Pokemon TCG. So we're left with a whole bunch of V-Stars that make perfect sense as to why we have them. And then Whimsicott. Random Gen 5 Pokemon. And I hope I've explained quite nicely, Whimsicott does not fit. Every Pokemon we've seen so far has either been prominent Gen 4 Pokemon, a Hisuian Pokemon, or Charizard that we know is different. And then with all of those, and we've seen a few V-Star at this point, Whimsicott as the one random non-Charizard outlier. And that is weird. Now, I did tweet this out. There is actually an explanation for it. And the explanation very simply is... Somebody on the design team loves Whimsicott. And that's pretty much got to be the answer. And I know it's not, you know, the huge conspiracy theory we wanted, and I'm sorry. But there's a reason why Whimsicott gets more cards than it probably should. There's a reason why the Whimsicott cards tend to be kind of cool and interesting. And the reason essentially is someone on the design team must like Whimsicott. And you know if I was on the design team, we'd get more Mamoswine cards and they'd be much better. We know that one of the designers is a big fan of Darkrai. That's public knowledge. That was in an interview. And that's why we get so many Darkrai cards and why Darkrai ends up being really good most of the time. And that is almost certainly the reason why we got Whimsicott V-Star. I am not saying anything bad about Whimsicott as a Pokemon. Whimsicott is clearly adorable. But I am saying, and I stand by this, and I hope I've explained it nicely... Getting a Whimsicott V-Star as early as we did, looking at all the other V-Star, makes no sense. And like I've said, I know Charizard is also an outlier, but whether you agree with it or not, whether you like it or not, Charizard is a special case in the Pokemon TCG, and moving forward will almost certainly continue to be so. But now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to hear from you guys. Are you happy that Whimsicott got a V-Star? Which random Pokemon that doesn't really fit would you like to see getting a V-Star? For me, it's obviously Mamoswine and Donphan. You probably could have guessed that. But I want to hear from you guys, so let me know in the comment section. Go nuts! Be nice! And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching. PTCG Radio.